What up, what up, what up, YouTube? This your boy 2G. Talking about the Golden Album, the Golden Era Album Breakdown. Today we're going to do Paid in Full by Eric Ben Rakim, 1987. Uh, Paid in Full was originally recorded at uh, Marley Marl's house because uh, at that time, Eric B and Marley Marl, they were roommates. And, uh, you know, Marley had converted his apartment into a studio. I mean, his whole living room just had these huge speakers and uh, drum machines and samplers galore. Back then, Marley Ma was working with the emulator. He was one of the first producers in hip hop to work with the emulator. It was like a sampling machine. And uh, he was uh, doing a lot of samples. And, uh, you know, Eric B wanted to, Eric B wanted to find a rapper to rap over his cuts. You know, he initially wanted Freddie Fox, but for some reason, uh, it didn't work out with Freddie Fox. So Rakim was a, a local radio listener. I think it was, uh, uh, BLS or KISS, one of those, probably both of the radio stations Rakim used to listen to and he used to call up all the time and send shouts out he heard eric b was looking for a rapper and you know he hooked up somehow he managed to hook up with eric b and uh you know they recorded a couple tracks <clears throat> and uh you know uh they they used marley's studio you know his home studio <laughs> uh rocket rock him was he was a teenager at the time. He was influenced by jazz. And uh, a lot of people compared his style to the Thelonious Monk. You know, he had a laid back vocal style. And, uh, you know, he came from a musical family. And uh, he was always in the streets. He was a stick up kid. You know, in the song Paid in Full, he says, I used to be a stick up kid. But now I think about all the devious things I did. I used to roll up. This is a hole up. Ain't nothing funny. Stop smiling. Y'all get the picture. Y'all remember that. But anywhere, anyway, Rakim was light years ahead of his time. He was prominent. His lyrical delivery was illustrious. Like I said, he was light years ahead of his time. And uh, Marley Marl was ahead of his time, too. And Eric B. knew that. You know, Marley Marl, he was... Uh, he was a part of the Juice Crew, and um, you know they were doing shows, and he was producing records for Shan and uh, Roxanne Shante. The more and more, Mar the harder, the harder Marley worked, the better he got. The more he worked, the better his style got. And uh, Eric B knew this. Uh, Rakim. He just wanted to get in the studio and rhyme. He had books and books of rhymes and stuff. So um, they went in there and they did uh, the single Eric B for President. It was uh, a sample from Fonda Ray's Get Over Like a Fat Rap. Now Eric B first told Rakim, yo, we're going to sample this Fonda Ray, Get Over Like a Fat Rap. Da -da 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 -da. Dun, 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 and Rakim laughed. He was drinking a beer and he spit the beer all over the wall. <laughs> and Eric B was like, yo, this is gonna make us rich. And Rakim just didn't he didn't get it, but he was like, yo, God, whatever you wanna do, we're gonna do it. Let's go in the studio and knock it out. So they, they went in the studio and they knocked it out. And uh it was a hit. Then they came with my melody which was the B-side, and uh, this time they was in the studio recording, MC Sham was in there, and Sham was like, yo kid, you need more energy, man, your, your vocals is too laid back, you need more energy, and Rakim was like, yo, this is what I do, B, it's me, this is what I do, this is how I flow, you know, because at that time, Beastie Boys and LL was out, and Run was out, they was, they was, they was high, they was, they was highly energetic, Rakim came with this, this slow, flow, slow flow type of lyrical style. Laid back. You know, he was laid back. You know, almost like a, 
almost like he was laying on the cloud while he was rhyming. You know, that just was his style. You know, and MC Shan behind behind Rakim's back, MC Shan and, and uh Molly Morrow used to be laughing at him. Like, yo, this dude is this dude ain't got enough energy. They was thinking Shan was thinking like, man, ain't nobody gonna get hyped up off of his music because he was too laid back. But uh Fate, fate, fate was different. Rakim's fate was different. Nobody knew he was going to be the greatest rapper of all time. Shan definitely didn't know. Because Shan was, he was energetic too. You love to hear the stories again and again on how it all got started way back when. The monument was right in your face, sit and listen to a while for the name of the place. You know, bridge, the bridge, the bridge, the bridge. The bridge. But Rakim was like, I'm going to do me. But anyway, they did a couple of more tracks, and uh, and Eric B was like, Eric B was kind of like listening to what uh Shan and Marley had to say, and he wasn't sure if it was gonna work out or not. You know, he knew Rakim was dope, but he 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 wasn't really sure where the project was gonna go because nobody heard of a laid back floor like Rakim. He didn't think the world was ready. He he knew that uh he knew that Rakim was hungry, but he didn't know how the public was gonna accept him. You know? And that's when Dougie Fresh stepped in the picture. That's right, Dougie Fresh. Rock uh Eric B was living in Harlem. His mother was living in Harlem and uh Dougie Fresh lived in the same hood as his mom's did, so Dougie Fresh, he played a important role in the making of uh, Paid in Full, because Dougie Fresh was like, ooh, 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 ooh. yeah, y'all, y'all didn't know I could do that, <laughs> Dougie Fresh, swang, Dougie Fresh was like, he was telling Eric B, he was like, yo, hops, Yo, I don't know if this shit gonna work, Hops. You know? Your man is dope, but... If you think it's gonna work, it's gonna work. It's all about what you feel, Hops. He telling Eric B, yo... Yeah, yeah, if you feel it's gonna work, then it's gonna work. You got ears of gold, Hops. Your ears is made of gold. You know? So... Um... Eric B as president started blowing up. BLS... Kiss and all them was playing it, and every, every everywhere you went, Harlem, Brooklyn, Queens, upstate New York, all over New York State, caps, uh, cats, tons of cats was just blasting Eric B for president and my melody and all that. You know, when Dr. Dre first heard it out in California, Dr. Dre was laying in bed, and when he first heard I came, he jumped out of the bed, jumped out of the bed, and was like, "What is this? You know, them them drums." Them drums is what caught up, caught everybody on Eric B as president. Them drums was crazy. They were synthetic drums that Marley had crafted from uh, a bunch of samples. Like I told you, he was working with the emulator and uh, there was a couple other drum machines he had. He had a Casio keyboard. He had all this type of shit that he was perfecting because a lot of rappers back then, they was using stock sounds. Whatever whatever sounds came with the drum machine, that's what they was using. That's why a lot of those early records sounded the same. Because everybody was using the Roland, the DMX, the Lynn drums. But Molly Miles said, yo, I'm about to do something ain't nobody never did before. I'm about to make up my own drum sounds. And add an 808 and, and, and just put it down like that. And create a masterpiece. You know? And uh, it just blew Dr. Dre's mind. You know, that was one of Dr. Dre's favorite records, one of his favorite records. And um, years later, he sampled the Eric B. as president drums on the Chronic album. The song Bitches Ain't Shit, But Hoes and Tricks. That's that's the same drum pattern from um, from uh, Eric B. as president. But anyway, <clears throat> when Rakim uh, released Paid in Full, it got him nationwide attention. 
attention he didn't even expect. Nobody expected. Then they did the remix, Seven Minutes of Madness. That just catapulted Eric B and Rakim. They sampled um, a young lady by the name of a Afra Haza. You with me, yeah. People overseas heard that. They looked at it. They looked at the the name Rakim. Oh, Rakim. They was calling him Rakim. He sampled Afra Haza. No, she was a she was from Israel. She was an Israelite or something like that. And people in Africa and, and, and Saudi Arabia they they heard Rakim. They, they thought it was Rakim. It was Rakim. That 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 blew their mind. It just blew their mind. No, it was seven minutes long. It was dope. It was danceable. You know, it, it just, it just, it just, it just, it just fucked a lot of people up. You know, and then with songs like "Move the Crowd," and I ain't no joke, man. That spread like wildfire. I ain't no joke. I used to let the mic smoke. Now I slam it when I'm done and make sure it's broke. What? Oh man. When that hit BET. Oh man, it hit everybody. Because at that time, people were saying that um, rap was a fad, it wasn't going to last, all this stuff. But, man, when Rakim came out, people had to go back to the studio and step up their game. No. It just, it just fucked a lot of people up, literally. Then, they came with... Uh, but uh, what's what's the other one? Uh, uh <clears throat> the song. Uh, oh man, I forgot the name of the song. With the James Brown sample. Oh man, I forgot the name of the song. But anyway, yeah, back to the album. Um, yeah, this album was uh, this album wasn't wasn't. Wasn't nothing to be took in lightly. You know, with songs as the rhyme, like as the rhyme goes on, and Chinese arithmetic, and oh, the name of the song was uh, "I Know You Got Soul." When that came out, that sent everybody back to the studio. When Hank Shockley of the Bomb Squad heard that, they was like, "Yo." We got to do something like we got to step up our game. I know you got soul. If you didn't, you wouldn't be be be, be, be in here. Picture a mic. Oh man, I remember when I first heard that. That that blew me away. That 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 sample. Nobody had really sampled like that. Now that was a danceable record. You throw that on. You throw that on in any club now. People gonna start dancing. That fucked a lot of people up. Sent a lot of rappers back to the studio. Run DMC and no LL. They was looking like, oh man, how we gonna top this? No, they was they was they was performing that night after night. Picture, uh, what do you say? Uh, I grabbed the mic like I'm on Soul Train. I remember when he did that on Soul Train. He said that uh, grabbed the mic like I'm on Soul Train, and everybody was like, oh, you know, we was at at the house. We was we was at the house had a living room full of people like oh shit no it wasn't no joke Rakim wasn't no joke definitely he told you that when he when he first dropped that single you know songs like move the crowd that was a slow a slow a slow type of production that matched his slow flow you know and uh, you know. Rakim was just light years ahead of his time. You know, Eric B was on the cut. Eric B is on the cut. No mistakes allowed. But that was the name of, a, of, of one of the tracks on the album. Eric B. Eric B is on the cut. You no, know? man, I love being taken back because that was just the golden, the golden era. You no. Know? Nobody knew how far this album was going to go. 
yo, this 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 album is indeed classic. It's one of the reasons why I had to review it. If you got any comments, hit me up in the comments box. This is 2G, 2G Lots. Hit me up on Facebook, 2G, T-W-O-G-E-E, -E, Lots, L-O-T-T-S. Please like and, and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, please. You know, hit me up. Got more, got more reviews to come. Peace, y'all.